one improvised weapon you're guaranteed to always have is the earth underneath you and the walls around you, and so we should use those to hit our opponent with them. Um, if you refer back to our earlier DVDs, we spoke about some very, very essential ground movement in our ground fighting video. I want to revisit it here really quickly because it is an essential solo training exercise, and it's what we refer to as a circle sit-up. The circle sit-up is quite simply this. Rather than doing a linear on the spine crunch or sit up, I'm seeking to greet the ground with one side of my back. So I'm going down on one side of my spine, and then usually either returning on the same side, one side of my spine, protecting my spine, and returning on my same side, or going down on one side, and then very lightly squishing my shoulders and transferring from shoulder to shoulder. Again, it's like I'm walking on those shoulders, so when I go down on the one side, I roll on the one side, transfer to the other, and I can come up. So that basic circle sit-up, we use, it's, it's not as demanding as an abdominal exercise as a basic sit-up or crunch would be, but mechanically it's far more efficient and tactically has huge implications to all aspects of mobility, not just on the ground, but as we'll see standing. So the second way to train it, the circle sit-up can be trained on the wall solo. When I fall back, the tendency is to brace myself with my elbow. This is a heavily padded surface, but if I go on a hard cement wall and I stop myself with my elbow or my fingers, that's where I'm prone to getting very, very injured. Instead, I want to greet it with a soft shoulder, and from there, couch my chin down, almost like I'm holding a violin with my chin on my shoulder, and transfer to the other side. And so in solo work, I should work on making that as smooth as I can. The third step after the ground isolation and the wall isolation is to have a partner push. At first, you can begin by pushing very clearly on one side so that I feel very obviously what side I'm going to absorb with. And he pushes hard. As that gets comfortable, I look at making that space as uncomfortable as possible so that I only step at the last minute so it's a truer impact. And this motion allows me not only to minimize the shock of the impact, but also to come off with a hit. So if he pushes me even center of mass now, it doesn't really matter. I can choose how to come off. It also allows me, if I don't want to go directly to him, to displace and to run off to an angle. And at the same time as I do that, I can hit. If I do take the force like a two-handed push where it's harder for me to lead one side to the other, I can also look at taking it more to the ground. So my body's cradled, and then I release my tailbone from that cradle to that push. If I take it fully cradled and I stay there, even on the pad, I feel the shock in my body. If I take it and I release, it takes the shock out of the tailbone. To come out, it's the reverse. Shoulder to tailbone. So if I imagine getting pushed hard from this position, that's how I would drive off the wall. So that's variation number one. Variation number two is when I'm facing. When I'm facing, Given a choice, I'd like to use my arms. So if we go back to our solo work, normally the second variation of the circle sit-up is then to start getting into using the arm screw. So the void of the hand touches the floor, nothing on the fingers. I gently roll directly onto the wrist, and then after the wrist, I couch that elbow inside so that I'm not shearing onto the tip of the elbow. And when I come back, I begin on the outside of my forearm, and I gently unscrew to come up. So in exactly the same manner, when we're on the wall, my hands will hinge up, and as it touches, I won't go fingers, I'll go void to wrist, and as I go void to wrist, the, ten the tendency is to jackknife that elbow in, so I will go void to wrist, screw, and go into a shoulder screw. So I can begin it first in solo work, so that I see that that's comfortable, and then I can get a push, and then I push off. So a very good basic exercise to see how I can functionalize my hands. My free hand can screw high or low, or stop me on the bottom, or I can do it all with one hand. Take a big running push to protect myself, nice and hard, and then ready to go. So again, from that position, and screw. The third variation, aside from the basic back roll, the basic arm screw is a duck under. And the duck under is more when we're falling from a distance and our hands are coming up. The tendency now is to spike the head. So now instead of screwing the elbow in, 
I will screw the elbow up and pass underneath. And the idea here is that I'm already falling to the floor, and so I will thread under with my free hand and be ready to move. At the beginning, until you've done this quite a few times, guys, it's quite nerve-wracking. So freeze your feet in place, fall, and then see how you can roll. This shoes is comfortable. He can push you and see how you can move. If you're very comfortable, he can run with you, grab the shoulder blades, and launch you. And then see how you can move. So this is a very good one for sort of diffusing that power as you come in. And you're ready to get thrown into a wall.